we're going to have some chicken and rice pilaf right out of the pan. Today I got home right at 5 o'clock. Once a month I go over to Randy's parents and I spend an entire day and I clean everything that they're not able to. You know, they're up in years, they can't clean an oven, they can't clean the bottom of their fridge, they can't sweep and mop anymore. You know, they do a real good job, but some things they, they just can't do anymore. Well, it takes me all day because I'm not a whole lot younger. <laughs> You know, but so I didn't get home till five o'clock. And the first thing Randy said when I came in the door was, I am starving. I didn't need any lunch. And I'm like, okay. So I walk out here to the cook shed and I'm like, what do you got? What do you got? Okay, I got it. We're going to have a one pot meal. It's chicken and rice pilaf. Easy peasy. I have everything. So let's get started. Okay, what you're going to need is some salt, some pepper, tarragon, garlic, that's minced garlic, some rice, some orzo, or any kind of thin, small pasta, some veggie broth or chicken broth, whichever one you like, olive oil, butter, and chicken. Okay, now what I'm going to use today is just one chicken breast. That's plenty enough for Randy and I. That thing's like over a half a pound. I mean, it's... So anyway, I'm going to use one chicken breast. It doesn't really matter what kind of chicken for rice pilaf you use. You can use legs and thighs. You can use canned chicken. It, it really does not matter. But I'm using chicken breast because that's what I had thought out in the fridge. So <laughs> let's get started. Oh. And I know you saw this jar. This is my homemade celery soup. And I'm going to use that as one of the bases. And Randy can link that up there somewhere if you'd like to see what's in that. But it has chick I made it with chicken broth. So I have chicken broth in there. And then there's like celery and potatoes and onions. And it'll just make a really nice addition to the, to the pilaf but you don't have to have it. Number one, we're gonna get this chicken cut up. Okay, and what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna cut it into little squares. So I'm gonna start with cutting it right down the middle, like that. And then I'm gonna go this way, and I'm just gonna start long ways, making small squares. It's easier to cook, faster to cook that way, and you feed a lot more people with a lot less meat. Okay, now that my chicken's cut up, we're going to salt and pepper it. And that's, an, you know, that's up to you how much salt or how much pepper. I'm salting for me. <laughs> Alright, and then we're going to put our pepper on there. And we do like a lot of pepper, so that might have looked a little heavy to you. And then we're going to mix it all together. Make sure some salt and pepper gets on all those pieces of chicken. All right, let's get the stove lit. We need a medium heat. And I'm using my Dutch oven because I love it. And right now I'm working on my cast iron so I don't have it. Normally I would make pilaf in a cast iron with a lid, but Dutch oven will work. So that's what we're using today. You need a couple of tablespoons of olive oil, and you'll need a couple of tablespoons of butter. 
just like that. I already had one up there. So we're going to put that there. We're going to let that melt. And then we're going to saute that chicken. Okay, now we're going to get that chicken in there. Hear that nice little sizzle? That's what you're looking for. You want that oil and butter warm enough to hear that sizzle. Give that a little stir. We're just going to brown it all the way around. There we go. It's been about five to seven minutes. This chicken is not done. I wasn't looking for it to get done. I just wanted it to brown, you know, saute a little bit. We're going to take that out. Set it in a bowl and set it aside. And I still have my oil and my butter in the bottom of that pan. I need a half a cup of orzo, which I'm not going to measure. I'm just going to guesstimate, but it's a half a cup. About like that. And we're going to brown that orzo in that butter and olive oil. Okay, and we're just looking to brown that orzo and you'll know when it starts to brown, it'll get a nice pretty like golden color, not necessarily brown. If you get it brown, it's probably burnt. Okay, now you need to keep stirring that around now because you don't want it to burn. So we're gonna stir and actually right now I'm gonna add a little more olive oil to this because now I'm fixing to add my rice. And I know I said fixing to. That's just the way I talk. So. Alright, we're going to add this rice and we're going to brown it up too. And we're going to keep stirring and let that rice get nice and toasty color too. And you'll start to smell it. When it gets right, You'll know because it'll smell just buttery or like nutty, like nutty. All right. And this recipe, I was probably, I don't know, 25, 30. And Randy's parents used to own a grocery store. And I worked for them for quite a while. And this older gentleman came in the store all the time. You know, he was always in and out, in and out. And, you know, he was just a lively old fella. And we were talking one day and um, he had a um, box of rice And I'm like, well, I, I can't really afford rice -aroni. And I couldn't because we had five kids and it would have probably took three boxes of, of rice -aroni to feed everybody so that's not economical and he's like oh but you can make homemade rice pilaf and I'm like well yeah but I don't know how and he's like well I can tell you because that's the simplest thing in the world to do he said you just do just like I just did you brown up your orzo or your tiny pasta he said to break little angel hair um, spaghetti into little tiny pieces and brown that. And that's how I learned, that's how I started out, but the orzo is just so much easier and I don't have to stay in there and break it. But he said, you just break up your pasta and then put how many ever pack, how many ever cups of rice you need to feed everybody. And then get your um, chicken broth or make Homemade, you know, just bouillon and water, doesn't matter. Or like today I'm using my homemade veggie broth that I froze and I thawed it out and put it in this pretty little jar. And Randy can link that somewhere too because that's a really great idea. And it's so inexpensive to make your own homemade veggie broth. But anyway, he said, just use whatever kind of broth you have or make you some broth with some bouillon cubes and water. And there's your rice pilaf. And then from there, you can add anything you like. You can add veggies, whatever you have on hand. You can add um, 
chicken or beef or it, it really doesn't matter at, at after you get the base which is this and your broth basically your rice pilaf is done that's all you need and now i could do that because i could use three four cups of rice and i could use a half a pack of spaghetti noodles and make my own chicken broth with bouillon and dinner was done for pennies rather than dollars and I was grateful and, and my kids they asked me what I was making and I was like oh it's mama Roni and they're like mama Roni they loved it they asked for it all the time they want mama Roni because that's what I called it it's mama Roni because <laughs> it didn't come out of a box mama made that all right now we've got everything brown. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Alright, due to technical difficulties, which were way beyond my control, you didn't get to see me what I did. So what it is, is I took one and a half cups of my homemade veggie broth, and I took the chicken broth out of my celery soup mix. Now, I'm gonna put the celery soup mix right on in there. And I'm gonna put my chicken back in there. Gonna give it a good stir. Now, I have two cups of liquid in here because I had one cup of rice. But actually, I need to take into account that orzo too. So I had a half a cup of orzo, so I'm gonna need a half a cup more liquid for that absorption so that I have even absorption in here. All right, now I'm just gonna put this with a lid on it and we're just going to let it cook down and dinner will be done. Now we need to add our garlic. Now we like garlic so that was about a tablespoon and a half of garlic and I'm going to put about a half a teaspoon And I'm going to put about a half a teaspoon of tarragon. All right, y'all. I'm not quite at my 20 minutes, but I'm pretty dry. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add a little, like a quarter of a cup, more liquid in there. Okay, and the reason for that is I don't want to scorch the bottom of my pan. I mean, it would have continued to get done, but I don't want to scorch. So, a little bit goes a long way. I'll put the lid back on. All right, now that I got my lid back on there, I think what I'm going to do is wait like one or two minutes and let that broth, that, that additional broth I put in there, let it get good and hot and then I'm just going to turn my eye off and let it cook in that residual heat with the lid on. Look at that steam, yes. Dinner is ready. All in one pot. Easy peasy. Yes. Dinner is starving. I am starving. Oh, goodness gracious. We got some more of that applesauce. Ooh, we had leftover applesauce last night, and I figured it'd taste oh, just as good tonight as it did yeah, last night. We're going to have to get her to show you how to make that because that is the absolute best way to mix up some applesauce. Best applesauce she ever made last night, by golly. It's the same all the time. He just must have really wanted it last night. Woo! Hot. 
I had to get that down one, get that down so quick I couldn't taste it. Mmm, <laughs> the remnants of the flavor are savoring in my mouth. Mm -mm -mm. Oh yeah. Yep. That's always been a winner. I mean, my my kids love it. Randy loves it, and it's so so easy. All in one pot. Dinner done. Can I go eat yet? You can go eat. Okay. All right. <laughs> See you in the next video. Like, subscribe, share, leave me a coffee. We'll see you next time.